fellow Wireshark users, it is time for another video which highlights one of the features of Wireshark. In this case, we're going to talk about finding text strings in your Wireshark packet captures. Okay, so let's start up Wireshark. And we will select our Ethernet interface. And I'm going to start a capture. Now, I want to get some traffic in here. So the other thing I'm going to do is, let's get this over here so we can see. All right, so I've gone to the CellStream website and it should load here temporarily. So there we go. I've loaded the CellStream.com website. And what I want to do is log out because I was previously logged in. And then I'm going to log back in. So this traffic uh, that I'm creating right now, so I've logged into the website and it says I'm logged in and I can now do whatever I wanted to do at the website. Okay, so that traffic has now been captured by Wireshark. So let's go ahead and close this. And what I will do is stop the packet capture. Now, you'll see this on a lot of videos on YouTube. They'll say, oh, you know, Wireshark's really cool. You can steal passwords and stuff like that. And then they'll do a little demonstration of how they find those packets with passwords. So let's sort of follow that procedure for a second to start off this little discussion of finding text strings. Notice that I am in my default profile. OK, and what I want to do is click on the little looking glass icon here. It's a button, right? And it says find a packet. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice that I get a little drop down and it usually defaults to display filter the first time you use it. But if you click on here, you can select string, right? So we're looking for a string. Let's jump up to the top of the packet list and notice that the background is red. So let's look for the term password, okay? Now, any string will turn the background green here. It doesn't matter. I did this, you know, if I misspelled password, it would still stay green, right? It doesn't know. So I've put password in here. And, and what these videos do is when you click find, you know, all of a sudden it sort of shows up that they have found a packet with the word password in it. And usually in that same packet will be the actual password. Okay, well, if you've ever tried this, you probably scratched your head and go, well, that didn't work, right? I mean, the way they showed it, because they're not telling you like the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The truth is that most websites, almost all of them nowadays, those web pages that contain the username password stuff are is all using HTTPS, right? There's a little lock symbol, and it means that the session and all of the transport of the traffic is encrypted. And so just like I just did, when you try to find the word password, it's not going to work. OK, it's not going to work. You would have to decrypt that information first. Um, and that's a whole different situation and a whole different lesson. And I do have some videos and articles on that. I will link those as well as I have an article to what I'm going to do here, which goes into more detail, and I will link that in the description as well. So, so how can you use this? All right, so let's take a look at this. So instead of the word password, let's look for the word user, okay? So again, I'm going to click Find, and you can see that indeed, right, on packet 139 here, I'll make this go a little bit lower, Right on packet 139, we have found the word user. If you look below where my pointer is right now, down into the bits and bytes, you will see that user, the word user, has been selected. And you'll also notice that it doesn't match the case, right? So this is case insensitive by default, all right? So this packet has the word user. If I click find again, now you can see I've gone to frame 140. And again, I see the word user. Now it has nothing to do with the user 
uh, that I, you know, the username that I actually put in or anything like that. It has to do with, uh, you know, the protocol that we're looking at, which in this case is simple service discovery protocol. In some of these, if I click find a couple of times, you might see uh, HTTP with the user agent, SSDP. And again, you see the word user uh, being selected each and every time. So this is HTTP with the user agent right there in, uh, what is it, frame 360, okay, that we're looking at right now. So, okay, it's a bit clunky, right? Because I got to keep clicking find, and if there were millions of packets here, this would be kind of really ugly, right? So, how can I find all the packets that have this word user without having to click find and find and find over and over and over again. Well, there's several ways to do this and you can actually put them in several places, okay? So one of the things that you can do is you can go up here to the display filter area, okay? And what I'm gonna do in the display filter area is I'm going to type the following command. I'm gonna say frame contains, oops, and then in quotes, I'm going to put the word user, okay? Well, I have to type it right. There we go. Frame contains user, okay? And then I'm going to apply this filter. Now, you would think that that would work, right? You would think that I would see a lot of stuff here, but indeed, I don't. I see nothing at all, okay? So... So why? Because it's looking for that exact match, right, of user in the contents of the frame. And remember, we do have a case issue here. So another way to do this, or a little bit less specific, that might help us is the other kind of find feature, which is called frame matches. Okay, so frame matches user. And again, if I apply this, Ah, now I'm starting to see all those different frame types that contain that word. And everything else is filtered away. It's still there, but it's I'm just being displayed those packets that match this particular find feature. Okay, and you can put this, by the way, you don't have to put it up here. If I cut this, control X, and switch this to display filter, and then paste it here, control V, and say find, I'll get the same result. Okay, I'll get the same result. So you could do this either place. All right, and it does work with the display filter selected, not the string value, okay? So this is a great way to sort of find this. And you could do this, you know, if you were looking for the, the term password, right? You could do this as well, and you can click find. Now, of course, what's going to happen here, hopefully, yeah, if you look at the bottom here, it says no packets match this filter. So it didn't change the display. Um, let's actually clear this, right? Um, and we'll jump back to the top and make this more obvious. I probably should have done that first. And then say find. And you can see down, down at the bottom, it's flashing. No packet matched that filter. So these are sort of options. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can direct. Let's put the word user back in here. And I want to show you a little bit about case. Um, so if I say frame matches user and find, right, that worked. Okay, that worked. Uh, if I change it to capital U, find, you can see that basically it, it did the same thing. I mean, you know, so again, it's case insensitive, okay, by default. All right. And if you're having an issue with case, you can actually in parentheses say question mark I, and that absolutely makes sure, right, that it is case insensitive, all right, that you don't get tripped up with case. So, so those are a couple of the use cases um, to find text within a packet capture. And, and it underlines, I think, also that you can't expect this to find usernames and passwords really, really easily that those things are usually encrypted and you're not going to find them without decryption first. One last thing I want to point out, I'll say cancel here, is that in the tools area of Wireshark, you'll see that there is an option here for credentials, okay? And 
Wireshark will sort of do those searches already without having to use the find feature for things like usernames and passwords, okay? Uh, just by, by hunting for credentials. And again, I wouldn't expect to find any in my little packet capture because that's all encrypted. But this is actually the even shorter and faster way if you know this stuff is in clear text. And there's a lot of protocols that are clear text, like voice over IP, the SIP protocol is clear text for, as a good example. And there's lots of others as well. So hopefully this will help you. Again, there's more details in the article, which I've linked in the description. I hope this has helped you with Wireshark and how to use this sort of generic find feature. Thanks for watching. And remember, capture every day. See you in the next video.